Hey, hey, I'm Jade Blair. I'm a legal independent escort sex worker here in Queensland, Australia. And last time I made a video on what it's like to work in a legal brothel in Queensland. And I talked a little bit how I had gone to Sydney a couple times to work in the brothels there, which is New South Wales, different state. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about it because I find it really quite fascinating because it's so different. It's so different. And it's not what I expected when I entered the industry. I thought all brothels would kind of be fairly similar. Um, but I guess like, you know, even it doesn't matter what industry you're in, even if you're at an office, a prim structure, every workplace you go is going to have a slightly different feel, a different vibe, different people, different management styles. But it's insane, the culture difference between the two states. And a lot of that is actually to do because of the regulation. So in Queensland, brothels and independent sex work is highly legalized. So it's regulated, not in a good way. It's not good, we don't want it. But there's a lot of laws surrounding what you can and can't do. In Sydney, it's decriminalized, which is much better. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's a really big difference between those two. The biggest thing I think I noticed straight away was like the size. So the physical brothels were a lot bigger in Sydney and a lot nicer. Like they'd have these million dollar chandeliers. They'd have, you know, music going. Some, some of them would have whole pools. Like they'd have pool parties. Um, they'd have pool tables. Like they were huge. Um, there were massive spa baths. Like there were rooms where there'd be like three king size beds. Um, where back in Queensland it'd be like this tiny little room with this like queen size bed, like a shower in the corner and a toilet, like that's it. <laughs> um, in Queensland you're only allowed five rooms. That's it, you're only allowed five rooms. So you can technically really only see five clients at a time. I guess you could see more if the clients wanna go in together, which does happen. Sometimes they're like, hey, can we just share? And you're like, oh, why not? Um, but yet yeah, most of the time, it's five clients at a time. In Sydney, they're not restricted. So they can have as many as, you know, they can afford to build. Um, I think the ones I worked at had close to 20 or 30. There are a lot, I didn't count them all. It was like a maze. I had to get someone to leave me everywhere. They ended up just giving me the same room every time because I just get lost. <laughs> and then we, me and my client would just be like wandering around. Sometimes my clients knew the place better than I did and they had to show me where our room was. <laughs> sure how to get out it was quite funny um i felt really bad though um so yeah much bigger much nicer but obviously there's a range like there's really upscale places and then there's really um, more like budget friendly places <clears throat> um in queensland as well there's a limit on how many ladies you're allowed to have working at a time and i say ladies because in queensland we we only have um brothels where there's female providers and male um, it's not that it's illegal not to, it's just we don't have any. There's not, I guess, enough demand to have like a male for a provider for a female. Anyway, so you're only allowed eight female, eight workers on shift at a time and two per room. Um, so say you have three rooms available because your other two are in construction, that means you're only allowed to have six ladies on shift. Um, but you can have up to five rooms and up to eight ladies. That's it. That's the cutoff kind of point. Um, so it kind of does mean that like, there's not a lot going on <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, you do get really, really crazy busy nights and they can be good. But other than that, like you kind of just sit with your group of friends, you get to know them pretty well, which is kind of nice. And you can get to know the managers. But, um, what I, I thought the, when I first heard about that law, I was actually like, yeah, I like that because it means it's not going to be crazy. It's not going to be hectic. People, the manager in particular is going to know what room I'm in, what client is there, how long they're supposed to be there. And if we don't leave, they're going to come looking for me, right? So I was like, yeah, this is great. But I found that after a while, the managers, because they didn't have a lot to do, they didn't do very much. A lot of the time they weren't watching the cameras. They had no idea where you were in the, in the brothel. They had no idea how long you'd been in the room. If your client had left, like sometimes we had like drunk clients just walking around the brothel, like doing whatever they wanted. And one of the girls got to manage to be like, um, are you gonna do something about that? Be like, oh. 
so yeah because they kind of just played solitaire or sat in the girls room with the ladies like they weren't watching the camera in the keeping time some were like some were really on it but a lot of them weren't um where in sydney i found it was like crazy there was like 30 girls at a time heaps of clients heaps of rooms a lot of them had maids like they'd have dedicated housekeeping because there were so many rooms they needed someone to go and just clean after every booking and do the washing where in queensland you do that yourself as the worker you have to clean up the room in sydney they'd also have like usually a dedicated security like member like I don't think they were armed. I think they had like pepper spray or something, but like a proper licensed security guard. You never had that in Brisbane. It was just a the bunch of girls with their high heels would come after you, which would actually probably be more frightening. <laughs> um, but in Sydney, yeah, they had like a proper uh, guard. They'd be like the manager, sometimes like a second manager and um, like 30 girls. And because it was so busy, I actually found that the management was not always, but more kind of efficient. They were better at keeping time. They didn't really know exactly where you were when you weren't in a booking, but if you were in a booking, they made sure that you got out safely, um, which was kind of lacking in um, Queensland. The other thing was um, drinking. So in Queensland, it is completely criminally illegal to bring alcohol on the premises. So you don't even have to consume it. If you just bring like a beer onto the premises, it is very illegal. You can get the, the brothel will get in big trouble and you will get in big trouble whether you are a working person, like one of the providers or a client. In Queen, in South, New South Wales, mm, you can do whatever you want within reason. So um, they can get a liquor license, the brothels, and a lot of them did. So one that I worked at, it was more kind of like a lounge nightclub with a bar and they'd have a bartender and so all the ladies would like sit in this kind of loungy nightclub-esque upscale kind of area in our little dresses you know just kind of looking cute we wait for someone to come in a gentleman um, and the gentleman could get a drink for free and the idea was you know they'd get a drink maybe the lady would have a drink as well we didn't have to pay for our drinks um, and the you know you sit down you chat the client can get to know you a little bit talk about what you do and don't like in the bedroom and then you know if, if they liked you you could go have some fun time which in one way it felt a lot more human um instead of in queensland you kind of just run up to them and be like hi mj how are you do you have any questions no okay awesome bye that's that's how you say hello and that's it um, where you could actually sit down and have a drink with your client um, and get to know them and decide if you want to spend time with them and they could do the same for you and see you more as a, a person rather than just look you up and down and be like that one. So that was really nice. Um, <clears throat> but the alcohol was very interesting. Um, so what they were really supposed to do is kind of limit the amount of alcohol that was free. So like the client could have one, maybe two drinks and then they have to book a lady. And if they don't book a lady, it's like, well, what are you doing here, mate? Like, this is a brothel. If you want a drink, go to a pub. Um, you know, we're not just gonna give you free drinks all night. But when I went to work there, it was just, um, it was kind of pandemic times. And I think they were really struggling for business. They never turned anyone away. Clients would come in who knew the area and they knew that they could just drink for free. They'd never book a lady. They'd just drink and drink and drink for free. And it was, very frustrating um, and I felt a little bit used um, as a working lady because you're sitting there in this really tight uncomfortable dress you know you're trying to flirt with this guy and some of them would really kind of go along with it and lead you on that you've got to so you spend ages with them and then you find out they're just there and then you know they literally tell you I'm just here for the booze I just want free drinks and you go tell the bartender they'd be like oh well too bad that happens it was so frustrating we had like I remember the last time I worked at that place we had this group of like they would have had to be like 18 19 and they were tourists from some European country I don't know what there was like five of them and they hated the women there they treated us like absolute garbage like we were so below them they wouldn't look at us they would just be like move um, and just drank all night and then 
because I um, left at the same time they did, they went to a much, much cheaper um, kind of like massage and hand relief place. So they just completely used us for like the drinks, which is very frustrating. Um, but usually they're a little bit better at that apparently at managing that. But um, it also does mean that like some of the clients get really, really, really drunk, which I hated. <clears throat> like there's nothing wrong with having a few drinks, you know, get a bit of Dutch courage, but there is a line where like, are they consenting? Can they consent if they're this drunk? Like if you're slurring your words and kind of like stumbling around, like where is the line? And I remember when I first um, went to the, the brothel in Sydney, I said, well, you know, I, I don't know how to serve alcohol. Sometimes we bring them the alcohol and I was like, I don't, in Queensland you have to get like a liquor license to serve alcohol so you learn when too much is too much and to stop serving them. I was like, I don't know when to stop serving them. Um, I'm not a big drinker myself and um, I don't know what half these drinks are or how strong they are or how to pour them. Like I was pouring, pouring doubles and triples because I had no idea. And um, yeah, they were just like, oh, don't worry about it. I was like, but what if they're not consenting? She's like, don't worry about it, darling. Just take their money. And I was like, I'm not raping anyone. Um, so yeah, if a client was very, very drunk, I'd just kind of be like, oh, I have to use the ladies and then run away. Um, we did get it a little bit in Queensland. People could bring alcohol on the premises, but that doesn't mean they didn't show up completely smashed. And I actually had the, I, so I usually work day shifts, so we had a lot less drunk people. Usually they were hungover rather than drunk. But a few nights I did work like night shift, like a Friday and Saturday night. And I remember asking the Queensland brothel manager the same thing. And they basically said, oh, don't worry about it. Like you won't have an issue with that. Like just, just do it anyway. Try and put them to sleep. Like take the money and put them to sleep. Um, give them a massage, they might just fall asleep. And I was like, mm, this just doesn't seem ethical. Um, the other thing is that the girls could sometimes get quite drunk because a lot of the places wouldn't really regulate the alcohol for the ladies. Um, and I did witness a few times where I think a lady went into a room where I don't think she could consent to that. Like, yes, she came to the place sober, ready to work, but it got to the point where she could no longer kind of consent. And I don't feel like she was in a state where she kind of really understood what was going on. And I spoke up and the no one would do anything. Um, and I remember going up to the girl and being like, are you okay? Like, do you need to go home? Can I get you a cab? And they're like, no, no, no. Like, it's, like, it's not like I can physically haul them out of there. Like a lot of them were bigger than I was what can you do? Um, but that did happen in Queensland as well. Like girls would sneak in alcohol. The only difference, it didn't stop them from getting drunk. The only difference was they could also get a criminal charge, you know? So, um, I don't, I kind of go back and forth on alcohol. I think alcohol is good to be served, but I think they still need regulation as does any nightclub on like, you know, not over serving. Um, yeah, I think those were like the biggest differences. The other was in terms of culture. So Sydney has a massive drug problem and drugs and drug lords and gangs used to be very intertwined with the Sydney brothels. Um, so they're not so much anymore, although I'm not in the inner circle, but yeah, back in the day, like during the Fitzgerald inquiry, they were very much one and the same. Um, and so even though they're not linked anymore, there's still very much a culture. So, you know, I have clients come up and they say, do you want to party? Can I party with you? And that was always a euphemism for Coke. Um, which is really interesting because in America, a lot of the time, if they want to have a booking with a client, they call it a party. Where here we'll say booking. And when we say party, we mean drugs. <laughs> um, but I was pretty lucky. I um, just said no to everything and I don't do drugs. Um, and I had zero interest in being really in a room with someone doing drugs. So I just said, no, thank you, not my thing. Um, and they really left me alone. I didn't get too much pressure or anything to do it. Although I was kind of lucky because I was fairly okay booked. I did have a friend who, um, struggled a little bit getting bookings um, and she said that you know she's never done drugs in her life but while she was in Sydney the only way she could get bookings is if she dealt drugs so she'd be like book me I'll give you a little bit of coke um, is how she got her bookings um, so that's 
that's not really like it's coke is obviously still very much illegal in um in the brothels but it was just really interesting because we didn't i'm sure like girls did coke and guys had coke in queensland brothels but it was so open like they just come up to you. even the managers like the managers were so so open about it they come up and be like do you smoke weed do you do coke and be like no and they'd be like okay well we won't recommend you then to this guy because he wants to party and i'd be like okay like it was so openly talked about um but i was never pressured which was good it was good but yeah that was um quite different from my little conservative country girl brothel <laughs> um the other thing i noticed is they were very particular on their rooms so because their rooms were nice the ones i worked in in sydney they had really nice sheets they had beautiful showers like we didn't really we had to usually make the bed and then we kind of dumped the laundry but that that was pretty much all we did um where in in sit um, Queensland we have to do a little bit more like cleaning we'd have to disinfect showers wipe them down clean the toilet if it needed cleaning um but and they did have a maid in Sydney and the maid was like super pedantic about this bed she wanted like proper like hospital quarters and like they're absolutely perfect I remember I rolled up this towel and it was rolled up but it had like a little like kind of rivet in it so it was like like that not obviously that's an over exaggeration but i had like a little dent in it because the towel had just bunched up in the middle a tiny bit i didn't even notice it and she pulled me into the room she's like what, do you think that this is acceptable i'm like whoa babes it's a towel like i'm happy to re-roll it not a biggie it's not like i want the room to look bad or i don't want to work hard but yeah she they took it to the extreme in making sure that their rooms were perfect which was really nice but at the same time because you'd had a beautiful clean room to work in and to bring people to but at the same time it's like babe i'm a hooker like I'm, i don't want to clean like i'll do the bare minimum to make sure everything's sanitary but i don't care if the, the pillow is facing this way when it should have been like this way you know that's just it's too much if you want that hire some mates um you know we give you 60 percent of the money we earn like why am I cleaning up your rooms as well? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a really another big difference. The other thing was um, how much they pushed to get girls. So in Queensland, you can't advertise to get a working girl. So they can't say, you know, we have positions open for a working girl. This is what it's like. All they can do is like on their website is have like a little button that you go to. It says, if you'd like to work with us, please email us. That's it. That's all they're allowed to say. Where in, um, in Sydney, they can do a job advert like any other job advert. So, you know, they'd have like, you know, you can make four or five grand a week. You won't. You won't even make half that. <laughs> but they'll say, you can make four to five grand a week, work your own hours, you know, only do like 16, you know, two eight hour shifts, a, a, you know, a week. And they, you know, be pretty and dressed up and discreet and blah, blah, blah. And um, what they'll actually do um, is some of them will put you up in a hotel, they'll fly you out from another state, um, they'll pay for your, your airfare ticket, they'll pick you up from the, from the airport, they'll drive you to like a hotel or an apartment, or sometimes even just in the brothel themselves, you can stay and like live. A lot of people would come from Queensland to New South Wales to work and they would live in the brothel for like a week. They just sleep there when they're in one of the rooms when no one was there when it wasn't busy um and because they got showers and stuff so you can just shower and everything there and then they just want to take out for food oh a lot of them had little kitchenettes as well so you can make like a sandwich or whatever um yes yeah, so you could like live there and the brothel would pay for it they're like you do um a mi this number minimum of shifts that we will pay for everything um so yeah a lot of that was really good for a lot of ladies um i never took them up on it because i particularly when i was still kind of learning the culture and the management team and the brothels i wanted to kind of like be able to go and like they still can't stop you from going like if you want to go you just go but they're not going to welcome you back if you leave before your time 
So I was like, I just, I don't want that over my head. I don't want the guilt. Um, but yeah, a lot of ladies did that and they, they found it really helpful. They liked it. They didn't have any complaints. It's not, they don't like take your passports or anything. They don't keep you there. If you leave too soon, they just lose out on money from your airfares and stuff. Um, and they just accept that risk. But most people who go to all that effort want to make the money. So they'll stay for their full week or whatever and do the work. But yeah, I think those are really the biggest differences. It is quite fascinating, isn't it? That it's so, so different between Queensland and New South Wales. I really would love to work in other states as well. Um, I've heard, so it's also legal in Canberra and in Melbourne and in Tasmania, but I've never worked there. And it's a very different regulatory system. So if I ever do, I'll let you know. But until next time.